He's my teammate at the minute. Ish. Is he a teammate? Like? <laughs> Pulling his turn round like this. Steam coming out of his ears. And I'm thinking, oh my God. Sat down and he's gone. You know, you've done really well. You've had a good couple of years, but you're never going to play professional football again. It's hard to put your finger on what's wrong with that club, but something is seriously not right. You're getting 18, 19,000 fans. Why is the lads on buttons? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, have I got the time right here? Like, it's eight o'clock on a Sunday morning and he's like munching on a sausage roll. How have I gone from taking the pens to like sat on the Judy? Like, how's he done that? Judy but he's Dench. Time. <laughs> you get that? Yeah. yeah. Got Judy Dench bench. Yeah. George. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. Yeah. Right, Jordan. Are we on? We're on, pal. All right, mate. Have you had a good week? Uh, yeah, back in training. I hate training, like, so. Why, have you been injured? Yeah, done my calf, missed a few games, but they won without me. Um, they put a winger up top, <laughs> Tom Hall, <laughs> and it's like, he's just mad. He's the maddest footballer I've ever seen. He just runs rapid, but he's he's been doing well, so he's been dogging me, saying I'm not getting back in. Do you think you will? We'll see. We need a point on Saturday to win the league, so hopefully I'll be back in. So just one point? One point. Where are you playing? Whitby away. Oh, is that a, so if you win, is that an overnight stay or what? Will you, will you stay out? No, so we've got the bus is going back. If we win it, uh, the bus is going back at 10 o'clock, so we'll get back to Bury about one. Oh, and then a few, of the, a few of the lads are planning all sorts, but we can't really plan yet because we don't want it, so... It's like it's like that'd be a dangerous it, that'd be a dangerous bus on the way home. If we it? win it, anything happens. Yeah, but obviously the lads that don't drink are like fuming. Why are we setting off back at ten o'clock <laughs> at night? Like, what are we gonna do? But fuck them. So, <laughs> it's their problem, fault. isn't it? Ah, oh, so that'd be great though. It'd be great if you could win it. Yeah, you've, you've... ninth promotion. Yeah, so, you think you'll make, think you'll make it ten. Hopefully, yeah. I have to go somewhere. <laughs> well, <laughs> might go up again next season. Yeah, you never know. Corey came to watch it, didn't he? Yeah. He surprised yeah, yeah. you. Yeah, so he thought he was coming to like a Sunday league ground because of what you'd been saying. <laughs> he didn't know they had a stand. So I seen, I was walking past with a hot dog. <laughs> anyway, he shouted me. He was like, I can't believe it here. I didn't know it'd have stands in a, a clubhouse. I was like, <laughs> what did you think Ratcliffe was like? It's going to a Sunday league pitch. Yeah, I don't know what he was thinking, but. Yeah, so my dad come past and was like, who's this? I was like, Corey. He was like, the Corey from <laughs> no, the podcast. Didn't. Didn't <laughs> Shit, Tash. <laughs> <laughs> so Corey uh, got hammered for a bit. And, I've just um, been dogging him now with the state of his beard. He's like, I think I first met him five or six years ago and he's not had a shave since. No, it's he's been growing it. <laughs> he looks homeless. <laughs> he does. looks like, like a homeless Jeremy Beadle. <laughs> but on the other hand. How would you get so good at tech on the streets? <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, oh. what have you been up to? What have I been up to? Just just work. Yeah, work. Went um, a bit down to London a couple of times. I drove down to Bristol the other night to watch uh, Bristol City versus Blackburn. Bristol City <laughs> hammered them 5-0. Yeah, I said that. Couldn't believe it. My mates are Blackburn fans. They weren't happy. I'm not surprised. There were like 600 and odd fans travelled all that way. For it's, a five it's, it's a good four five hour drive to get to Ash five nil. That's <laughs> that's as a fan. That's, that's the worst you, day ever. You give up. Mm. Well, I just won't bother, would you? Two nil at half time. They ended up five. He just yeah. He did get, well then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he had the better half. <laughs> <laughs> See, there are then games, though, especially as a like a winger flair player, aren't you? You can't if you don't get the ball, you can't do anything. No. Well, we'll ask uh, our guest about that because he's a winger and flair player that. I never knew about. Well, to be honest with you, it's it's the first time in a very long time I've been in a room where I'm the second best looking lad in the room. Yeah, he's a good looking chap. He's a good looking chap and I might I, have to ban my missus from watching this. <laughs> am I third or am I four? Well, how many year of us is there? Four. No, there's set one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six of us, year seven. Right. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's up there, isn't he, Evo? Yeah, good looking lad. Obviously, I've got the Invisaligns in at the minute. Uh, getting used to him. He's got perfect teeth and never touched an Invisalign. Yeah, and he's he's getting on a bit now, but his trim is solid as well, isn't it? He's so got a, Slate yeah. Barbers, Rami. <laughs> told me to give a shout out for a Slate Barbers. <laughs> I got Slate Barbers. Big shout out to James. And Tom. 
What a guy. And Tom. And Tom, yeah. yeah. James and Tom. And like, Danny, fuck your trim Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, I can't give a shout out to Danny. <laughs> like Stevie Wonder had cut it. <laughs> oh, I can't do that. Uh, uh, so, yeah. But, yeah, he's got a lovely bonnet. Great hairline. Yeah. Cheers, lads. He's a... Uh, by the way, it's Gareth Evans, if you didn't know. So he's my teammate at the minute. Ish. Is he a teammate or, <laughs> or is he just training partner? <laughs> he's so a I colleague. Sh- yeah, he's a, he's a work colleague at the minute and he's the most bothered work colleague ever. So his team was getting hammered in training last night and I was shouting, I told you yellows were shit. And he went, Jordan... I just don't care, mate. <laughs> I, was just, I was just running around the pitch. Yeah, but you were after a nibble, that's why. Yeah. So I was like, nah, you're not getting one. It's not me, one. It's, it sounds like you've got to that age where football is no longer a passion. Uh, I don't know. I still love the game. I still yeah. love playing. I still love being involved in stuff. But How come you don't play then? That's Bernard John, mate. <laughs> it's down to them, is it? Yeah. No, yeah. I don't really know. I think, yeah, I got to like 34 and I've done it for like 17, 18 years. Yeah. And I was just, I just got, to be honest, the biggest thing was like, I just got sick of the travel, just got proper sick to death of it. So I was like, I was out the house all the time. I don't think enough people talk about how much as a professional footballer you're out the house, but sometimes they'd be like, especially at Portsmouth, there's not another football club near it really, <laughs> yeah. other than Southampton. Where they're obviously playing in the Prem or the Champ or whatever. Yeah. <clears throat> so every away game's a night over. And if it was north of Birmingham, it'd be like you go up on the Thursday and then you stay over, train on the Friday, stay over, play the game. You don't get home until like three o'clock in the morning on Sunday morning. And I'd done this for like years. And then you might be away again on the Tuesday. So you're out the house like for a full week virtually. Yeah. There's little things like that, I think, accumulated. And I just got to the point where I was like wearing thin a little bit. So I decided to go part-time and not the full-time thing. On yeah, people... Like you don't really mention that much, do you? Like how much traveling you do. Like you, you've always played kind of lower. So when it well region regionalized, yeah. you? So yeah, conference yeah. north or north north prem or or whatever. So you've never really. And like, away day, do, I used to think buzzing, buzzing. That's yeah. me done. But obviously, if you've got a missus at home and you're oh, away kids. Saturday, Tuesday, you, yeah, it's terrible. Yeah, and especially if you're not playing. <laughs> It's even worse. He but, was playing that. <laughs> no, I'm still playing at the minute. I mean, for like for other footballers, because you generally the whole squad will travel, yeah. Especially on the Thursday, and then on the Friday you might finish training. You have you, you have your tea in the hotel, then you'll have a meeting, won't you? And they get the board up, and they'll they'll write the team. And if you you travel not, down it? there, you're not even in the squad. Yeah, it's like, for God's sake. Even like at our level, where some of the lads don't get on. And they get home at 10 o'clock at night, set off at 10 o'clock in the morning. I'm yeah. thinking, fuck that. Yeah, you haven't even played. Yeah, like what a waste of a day. So, Crap. But you are being paid and... though. Yeah. you got to remember that. Yeah. And obviously as a pro footballer, you're being paid very well as well. So it's it's not all doom and gloom. Oh, you could just do what I do and just every time you travel to a hotel, just try and chat up one of the staff members. <laughs> <laughs> make, it worth, make it worth your just while. have a weekend of it. Yeah, just make a weekend of it. <laughs> Yeah. So but yeah, so it got to like thirty four, and I was, I was just thinking like I've had enough of the professional game. I was getting a few offers in after I'd done, I'd done a two year deal at Bradford, and I was getting a few offers in. So I was like Swindon and Warsaw and Gillingham and all these places, and I'm like, I've been down south for six, five and a half years at Portsmouth, and come back home. Set and up you're a Mac Ladder, yeah. You're from yeah. Macclesfield. Yeah, but my missus is from my wife's from Radcliffe, so we we ended up living Hawkshaw just outside Ramy. So we set up shop. I'm like, I'm not moving again. So the offers that were coming in just weren't feasible at all. And then um, then the Radcliffe thing came up, so I went part-time. It's, br- but... it's brilliant that you turned down Swindon, <laughs> Walsall. Who else was it? Gillingham. Gillingham. <laughs> and go to Radcliffe. <laughs> what a place. <laughs> what a yeah, place. Dream. Miss his hometown team. <laughs> Is that why you That went? was partly the reason, honestly, it was. Um, it's just not worked out. It's just the part-time gig's just not. It's harder just than never you, got going. It's harder than you think, isn't it? Dropping from full time to part time yeah. just to get not just your mind around it, but your body around it. Yeah. Yeah. I think if you do it the other way, where if you come th- if you come through the game and you get to like say you're nineteen, twenty and you start off at part time, then maybe you might have a full career in it. You can sort of get your head around it more. But I think I found it tough going from what I was doing, double sessions three times a week, training five times a week and then whatever 
to then going down to that level where you're training for an hour on a Tuesday, hour on a Thursday on AstroTurf, turning up on a Saturday, and I'm like, I don't even feel fit. Like yeah. I'm just, and yeah. it's, a, it's a mud bath as well. It's like, it's just not conducive to the way I play football. It just, it just doesn't work. So I don't really know what it is, but I've enjoyed it. Honestly, I have like being around like a great bunch of lads. How have you found them? To be honest, every time, every person that I speak to, I've got a bad word to say. Yeah. Honestly, I, sw- I swear to God, they've been really good. Um, We've mentioned it loads, aren't we, on here? Like mm-hmm. hundreds and hundreds of time. What people's perception of them is, <clears throat> is nothing like the real John and Bird when, when you meet them. Yeah, the reputation goes before them a little bit, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. And it's like, I think from the sort of documentary and stuff like that, you're thinking, because when they came in, I was thinking it's going to be a rocket up us here. Like we're going to get battered all the time, but they're not like that at all. Honest to God, they're good as gold. And they don't even play me, but I still pr- like really respect them. Really it. good guys, yeah. still enjoy them. And uh, See, that takes really a lot argue, of doing like... as well, isn't it? When you're not playing, to still enjoy it and be there. Yeah. Because usually like a lad, like the reds fall off if they don't play, whereas the yeah, way that look, they've treated you, you're still happy. Yeah, I've sort of had in the back point. of my mind that I'm going to retire. Well, I am going to retire in the next few weeks, so I knew at the end of the season I was going to, I was going to pack it in. So I was like, I'm just going to want another contract. I'm just going to see it down. I don't really want to. I don't want to get to like December, January, and just cancel the contract, yeah. and then that's me walking out of the game. I'll, I'll stay to the end of the season, and obviously the lads have been doing well. So like, well, be nice well, to well, stay on board, yeah. Then, it? Yeah, that's what I mean. So stay on board and enjoy it. In if, like towards the end of the season. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> once he <laughs> once he plays the kids in the end, it's like me. You might might get a kick, but I don't know. We'll Imagine, see. Imagine, right? So we're gonna go through his career now. It's been a good one. Yeah. Tuesday night at Ratcliffe, we trained, but they wouldn't put the lights on <laughs> on the um, Astro. No, the generator broke, didn't it? The generator broke, so Uh, they couldn't put the lights on. So, obviously, once he went dark, that was us done. So, we trained for like 45 minutes, and then we went and had about four pints and a kebab in the clubhouse. (laughs) 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 So, like, that, that, like, from going from that to that must be tough. Yeah. Yeah, it was difficult to get your head around, you know, and like... You've, like you make loads of sacrifice in your professional career and you never have a beer on a Friday and you eat everything right and all that. And then, like I say, I got to like 34 and I was thinking like, I had enough of it. I had enough of the travel. I had enough of like eating pasta in hotel rooms, uh, hotels and all that. But then signing for Radcliffe is like opposite end of the spectrum, <laughs> mate. It's like they're eating chicken tikka kebabs on a Tuesday night and like literally got, you should have seen the table. It was like at Jordan, one, it's like pine pots just everywhere. <laughs> they just on just, a tube, random everyone, tube Yeah, night. yeah, just randomly, just because the generator broke, it's like, oh, we'll just go and have a beer then. <laughs> but I enjoyed that element of it. Honestly, it's like sometimes I think it's so serious, the professional game where sometimes you finish a game on a Saturday at Portsmouth and you'd be like, why does it just everyone just get in the bar and have a beer together? And like, we've just, we just won 3 0 or whatever yeah. at home in front of 20,000 people. Everyone just have a beer together and then go home. But it was always like, it's like a massive thing where you can't be seen to be drinking alcohol. That's like, that's not professional. And that went on for like 17, 18 years. But then, like you say, the Radcliffe thing's the opposite end of the spectrum. Yeah, where it's like... at Portsmouth. <laughs> yeah, you, you want to go <laughs> that that straight in the bar. No, but sometimes, though, when it's too serious like that, you, you, you lose the love of the the game as well because it becomes it does just become a job and you end you you lose the enjoyment that you had as a kid when you when you just loved playing football but because everything's so serious the build up the training the preparation the game if you don't get anything out of the game it's like fucking hell it's been a been a crap week yeah and you've dedicated everything to it yeah. as well so you've slept right <clears throat> you've eaten right you've done everything to the letter of the law and then you go and lose on a Saturday and you're like, well, what was the point of that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's difficult, but then that's, that's just one week, but then it accumulates over years and you're like, yeah, so much sacrifice goes into being a pro. Honestly, it does. I used to, I used to give myself a sex ban on a Friday <laughs> before a game, just because I wanted to be like angry and pent up on a Saturday. Yeah. Yeah, honestly, that's, yeah. That's why I just punch yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> same thing, that. isn't it? It is, yeah, but it's <laughs> still up. Still a weird thing. So talking about when you was a kid, yeah, you was tipped by Ferguson to be a future star. How did that come about? Yeah, it's not really panned out, has it? <laughs> right. So I, was, I had to try and do the maths because it said 
I was looking on like Wikipedia at your career and it said Crew Alexander from whatever it was, I can't remember, uh, 1994 or something. I was thinking, 1994? So you were six? Yeah. <laughs> and you heard he said, started off at Crew you when you start? were six. Yeah, so I started and then you went to six. Man United. I don't, like, how does that happen so young? Um, yeah, so I got, I was just playing for my local team, Bollington United, and I think one season, I think it was, I think I must have, yeah, I think it was like six or seven. We had 18 games that season and I scored 76 goals. <laughs> Who were you playing like, against? Just like, it was just the Stockport Metro League, so it was just like other, other six and seven year olds, but I'd score like, scoring like nine goals every game and stuff like it was daft. And then eventually, I think word got around and a scout came down and was like, from crew, this was crew. So the crew scout came down and come down and we'll have a look at him. And um, yeah, so I went down, it was like seven years old, got picked up, signed on, stayed there till I was 10. And then I played against all the all the best teams like Man U, City, Liverpool, like you name it. And um, United obviously just picked me up. And then I'm playing in my back garden one day <laughs> And I'm just like booting the ball around. I was obsessed with football. So I'd just, I'd just be in the back garden, like kicking the ball constantly against the wall. But um, the phone rang and my mum's come out in a panic. She's like, Alex is on the phone. Alex is on the phone. And I'm thinking, my best mate, Alex, like, what's he, what's he calling me up for? He's like, Alex Ferguson. I'm like, what? It was Fergie on the phone? I called my, called my home phone, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, nah, no chance. So, so she's rung my dad and my dad's at work and my dad's raced home and spoke to him. That's a long phone call. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, Alex, just wait. His dad's on his way home. Yeah, but like, my mum didn't know what was going on. She, I mean, she, she called him Alec as well. She talks about the story to this day. She's like, I called him Alec because I was like panicking. <laughs> <It's> Scottish. <laughs> so my dad's raced home and he's on the phone to him for like an hour. And he's just like selling the club to us. We ended up going down, give us the ground tour, introduced us to Sir Bobby Charlton and all and this. And how old were you at the like, time? Ten. You never get that now, would you? Yeah, a, a Premier League manager getting involved in trying to sign a ten-year-old and ringing your home. like they just get won't dumb. do it. They won't even even eighteen, nineteen-year-olds at the club. Sometimes the manager don't even know about no, them. Don't even have a clue. Though. No, like, but whatever. Johnny Smith. Which one's Johnny Smith? Oh, rang his mum the boy. Yeah, <laughs> Alex Ferguson's ringing your mum and dad's house. Yeah, for a ten-year-old to come and sign. That's. I didn't That's think anything it. of it at the time because obviously I'm like 10 years old, but I'm looking back now. I was like, flipping out. That's a big deal for my mum and dad, that. Yeah. Like, mega. So, yeah, he showed us all around Old Trafford. And like, I'm shaking hands with Bobby Chance. I'm like, Bobby Chance, my dad's hero. Like, me, me and my dad have been season ticket orders at United since we were two, since I was two. So, it's like, watch United for years, like, yeah. proper diehard. And um, yeah, he's shaking hands with Bobby Charlton and he's like, proper starstruck. And then they just take me in the office and they're like, so are you signing then or not? You can't say no, can you? Yeah. And my mum and, mum and dad are looking at me like that. Ah. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And I like just signed straight away. And it was it was good to be fair. Loved, like I was there for four years and I saw the world. Like I went to, went to Dallas, Tenerife. You do all like the junior tours, don't they? Yeah. They're brilliant. Went to Dallas for two weeks when I was 10 years old. I'm like waving, like on the coach, waving my mum away and she's like in floods of tears because she's not going to see me for two weeks and stuff. But, yeah, like Tenerife, Barcelona, Paris, Germany, Holland, like all these places. <laughs> saw everywhere. It was, it was unbelievable. Like 10, 10 years old, between 10 and 14. Yeah. It's like different gravy. But the last year or two that I was there, I was like, I'm starting to think, I'm not like, I'm still a part of it and I want to I wanna be playing for Man United, but they just signed Van Disselroy. They just signed Juan Sebastian Verón. And spent like big money, and it was. It just seemed at that time where class of '92 had sort of fizzled out a little bit in terms of bringing players through. And um, yeah, I just didn't see a pathway through. I thought if United need a player now, they just go and spend it. They've got that much money. Yeah, go just go and spend one. twenty-eight million pound on Baron. Like they're not yeah. bringing young lads through. There's no one coming through. Who were, then, they, were, were there any ones in your age group who who kind of came through? Any yeah, eventually, yeah. So, that, well, they used to mix the age group. So, I used to play a year up, and in that age group, there'd be like Danny Simpson was in there. Um, and then in my age group, there'd be Fraser Campbell, went on to have a good career. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Ryan Shawcross, obviously not with United, but he ended up being like Stoke. a legend at Stoke. Yeah. yeah. So, there was a few that came through, and um, 
at that time, but yeah, I got to 14. I was like, I just don't see myself getting into United's first team as much as I love the club. Yeah. But then crew were producing players where it was like Robbie Savage, Dean Ashton. Go on, Robbie Savage. Go on, Robbie. <laughs> Big shout out. <laughs> Dean Ashton. Like Robbo's Kenny, like all these plays, they were just it was just like a conveyor belt was of Dean talent. Ashton at crew. Yeah, it came through at crew, yeah. Did they? They I sold didn't know him. That. They yeah. sold him for what like a, a million. He was. Yeah. They sold him for like a million quid. Yeah. And built all the training ground and all that. But <laughs> they were like a conveyor belt of talent. And I just thought, I'm just gonna go back to crew and just So was it your do choice it to way. leave? Yeah, United? well yeah, it was me and my dad's to be fair. My dad was like in my ear a little bit about it, but it was yeah, I don't, your dad agree with it as well. Like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, a big yeah. decision, that though, isn't it? It is, yeah, yeah. So I just, I don't know. With hindsight, maybe I should have stayed at United and just seen it out and saw what happened because of obviously what happened with Crew eventually. But yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I think sometimes, especially at that age, if you can, if you can see it out until you get in like a scholar and maybe you know, like seventeen, eighteen, that if you're then leaving Man United at that age, I think you, I think you probably. St- Dropping down to a higher standard than, you yeah. Know, you know, what I mean? you know definitely like you, a few branches. You know, you start off, yeah, you start off point. Yeah, that's what I mean. So looking, yeah, with hindsight, if I'd have stuck it out, and maybe if I'd have like nicked an apprenticeship or something, get to eighteen. Yeah, you see the young lads coming down now, and it's like, well, even if you nick a year's contract, you're on big money, like a year's pro or whatever, yeah. and then you work your way down. Like and you're set for thing, life like without get, playing yeah, a game now. Like if I'm you like, get released. You can then you, you go. You might go straight into a championship club at like if you're leaving Man United at eighteen, nineteen. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So you, you know, let's like, say you could potentially start off at a higher level. Don't always work out. Instead, like that, you right? went to the PFA exit trials. <laughs> How were they? Yeah. yeah. So you end up going to Crew at like fourteen, yeah. fifteen, and yeah, and then a while though, weren't you? And I had I had a bit of a nightmare, so I went there and I got to like I got to sixteen and I I got two stress fractures in my back. And I literally couldn't move. I was like an old man at 16 years old, but I was tiny. I was like 15, 16. I was like that. I was honestly to God, I was so tight. And then within a year, I just flew up like a foot and my back just like literally just split. I had yeah. stress fractures in it. I just couldn't get it right. So I couldn't go into a full-time apprenticeship at that time. So I did it a year late. So I started my YT at 17, did that for two years. And then, yeah, got to 19 and got released. I didn't know you could do that. That's mad, isn't it? But I'd be a year off. Yeah, I'd be a year off. Sabbatical. Yeah, so I just went and did my qualification. I did like my A-levels and went to college full-time. And then I used to go into training on a Tuesday and Thursday night and train with the under-16s. Um, so I was still like dipping my toe in with the football, staying like within crew's yeah. radar kind of thing. But yeah, I was just I was just at college basically. And did you think, did, when you got released then, after your scholar, did, did you think that was it for pro football? I was told it was, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I had Steve Holland, who's now, he was the under-18s coach. He's now Gareth Southgate's number two for England. Yeah. So I can't really argue with his, like, pedigree. <laughs> but he was my youth <laughs> He's team. the one who, uh, who they reckon Ben White's fell out with, don't they? Yeah. I think yeah, he's had a few. Right. He's had a few fallouts when he was at Chelsea and stuff like that, but I never really saw, saw eye to eye with him, but I just, I knew that he was a really good coach and just, cracked on with it kind of thing but it got to February March time of my second year at crew and Dario's pulled me in the office and he's gone we're giving you a pro you're going to get we're going to give you a couple of years we like want to, want you want to carry on your development with the club I'm like brilliant class then it got to April and Dario stepped down as manager that's the the day that he stepped down and wasn't manager anymore and Steve Allen the 18s coach took over as the gaffer and honest to god it was the day he'd done all of his press and that in the in the morning to say, you know, I've become the crew manager. Like, this is my philosophy moving forward. All the usual press stuff. Yeah, yeah. And then his first job <laughs> was to, to like, Gareth. <laughs> his first first job was to bin all the YTs because it was our day of reckoning. So everyone was like milling around in the changing rooms. And I'm thinking, I'm getting a pro here. I've been sold. So I've just marched in, sat down and he's gone. You know, you've done really well. You've had a good couple of years, but... You're never going to play professional football, kid. Like it's just—is that what he said? Yeah. To you? Oh, so crushed. we think that, we think that you, you have to be so harsh. I know, <laughs> yeah. it was proper harsh, and I was like, I'm having this." I wasn't saying anything, and he went, "We've set up a trial for you at Nantwich Town. You go on trial there, and like see how see how you do. You do. Think you're good enough to be a footballer. <laughs> yeah, I do, Steve. Well, I don't. <laughs> Get yourself off. The last thing you need that uh, oh. Nantwich Town as well. 
<laughs> so, answer it's time, so I've gone. What a horrible feeling there was, like a 17, 18 year old. It's, yeah. Yeah, my whole bubble burst because I would, yeah. like, like I said, I've been told that I was getting one and then... Yeah, especially when you think you're getting and... a two-year pro. Cheers, Daniel. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. So I, I didn't really know what to do. But I, 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 he was saying all this and I was looking at him thinking, nah, I can't believe this. And I went, bollocks, you're wrong. And walked out. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. Good said lad. it to his face and he was like, didn't really know what to do. And I've just got in my car, but there was like another year, another sorry, another month left on the contract. So all the lads that got released carried on going in to finish the B Tech qualification and carry on doing bits of training and all this, yeah. and little bits of coaching for the level two and stuff. But I just never went back. <laughs> Did <laughs> you? Not? Nah, I just went home and I was like, Dad, I'm not going back. So what happened in the like? That was the classes like ex exit trials now, aren't they? Or something yeah. like that. So I've never heard of these. I yeah, just I'll try and explain to you what they were. It's basically. I've, I've, Never been at league, though, have I? So. No, but like when all the scholars are released and they don't get a pro, they have these exit trials where I think now it's over a weekend where they play like three or four different games, but back then it'd just be one 90-minute game and like 500 lads turn up, don't they? they just got to try and give them minutes where they can. Maybe yeah. not 500, but... You know. <clears throat> so some lads are literally getting like 10 minutes. So it was... Our... Come on and impress for 10 minutes. <laughs> What the fuck? Mate, honestly, oh, honestly it, was, it was one game. So, like I say, it was all these all these 18, 19 year olds that have been released at the end of the two, second or third year scholarship. So I turned up with my dad and I'm like, oh, it's like well, let's just see how it goes, kind of thing. But there was, like Seds just said, there was like 200 kids turned up to this game. And there's only one game of 90 minutes. There's only one pitch. Is that Northwich Victoria's <laughs> ground? Keepers. Yeah. Is that Northwich Vicks? Yeah. I was, like, I was lucky in that I started the game and because there was it was just like a roll on roll off basis so they'd stop the game every 10 15 minutes take 11 off and throw 11 on so if you're a keeper you go on for 15 minutes you might not even have a shot to say well you don't help yeah but it's just ticking a box to say the PFA are like oh we're ticking a box because like we're sort we've, of looking after, aftercare yeah, kind yeah, of we've, thing yeah we've, we've given these lads another chance to be yeah. able to but get a club not, like it's, it was a bit of a stitch so anyway, like five, six minutes into the game, I score straight away. And then two minutes go by and I score straight away and we're 2-0 up and I've scored two. So then they roll everyone off, but they keep me on. And then I score another and they roll everyone off and keep me on. But I ended up playing the whole game, scored like four goals. Oh. <laughs> so it was like a proper touch. And I look back now, that was like a, that was a defining moment because if I get rolled off after 15 minutes, I'd just go into the abyss then. I'd yeah. not have a career. Yeah. Or I'd just go... On trial at Nantwich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I did, I did That's all a right. real sliding door moment, that, yeah. isn't it? Because if you don't get yeah. that first goal, you're probably coming off, aren't you? Yeah, I was lucky. What was, was the goal lucky. like? Can you remember it? I just took it around the keeper. I just One of the lads who just booted the ball and it's like bounced through the middle and I'm just running, took it around the keeper and slotted it in. That's Yeah, defenders don't know each other. Keeper don't know anyone. Yeah, they're all you're over just, the job. Yeah. I just run in. Yeah, you're happy it, there. So. Cheers. It helped that your dad was a manager. <laughs> 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 Everybody off apart from my son, you stay on. <laughs> but I was, yeah, on the back of it, there was, so yeah, there was loads of scouts in the, in the stand with clipboards and stuff. And they're all like marking each player individually and doing the best that they can kind of thing. And then I got quite a few offers, but it was like an offer just to come in on trial. There was no like, you're getting a contract. Here's a deal. Be a pro. Oh, yeah. So then, um, Port Vale were there at the, at the game and they were in League One at the time, I think. And that was the highest up club that was there pretty much. So I went in on trial um, all summer and I scored. So like the first first game that we had, scored. And then I had a really good pre-season. It was Martin Foyle was the manager. We got to the end of it. They had massive financial problems and they took me in at the end of pre-season and was like, You've been unbelievable, but we literally we can't even give you like fifty quid a week. We've got no money whatsoever. Like, he recommended oh, you to someone though, did he? Which yeah, is all right. Yeah. So I was there for like I was there for six it. weeks, and he's turned around and said this. I'm like, you knew six weeks ago that you couldn't give me any money. So what? Like, why? What have you held on for? I think he might have just held out in it in the hope that in a bit of money came available. But he's like, listen, one of my mates, Ian Brightwell, is the manager at Macclesfield Town. Go down there. He's going to give you a contract. So I just went down there and signed. And it's the hometown club. So I'm You didn't from... even go in and... No, I wasn't even on trial or anything. I just went straight to the ground and signed. Pro deal? Yeah. Buzzing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was buzzing, so it was League Two. League Two, yeah. yeah. So I've been released from Crew. Crew were in League One. 
and then they took on like took on like six seven eight lads from that year as pros and they're nowhere near the first team they're just in the 21s or the races or whatever and then I, off the back of getting released i've ended up at mac in league two and i'm playing every week so it worked out well to be yeah fair. yeah good you'd rather that wouldn't you other than just be sat yeah in a, like a squad player yeah but so it's can... mac though isn't it <laughs> that's the only problem <laughs> yeah it was my hometown club so it was like i was i was in my element you know like walking around town and people know who you are and i'm on like 200 quid a week so it's like it's not like the financial thing but it's just representing your hometown club and playing it like my first game was bradford away in front of eighteen thousand. i was like this is class like buzzing off and was you doing all right was you up to the level yeah i went straight in to be fair so the first maybe the first 10 15 games i was i'd be coming on and then yeah, I just ended Centre up mid or wing? Centre forward. Was he centre forward? Yeah, yeah. Was he there? Proper utility man, me. Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> I played everywhere. But yeah, I was, I was up front. And um, I think at that season, I scored seven or eight goals. And then the year after, I scored 13, maybe 12, 13. So I'd done all right. First two years as a pro, I'd scored like 20 odd goals and played most of the games. I loved it. It was class. Yeah. In Mac as well. League Very two. good, yeah. And then, you, like you mentioned, that your your first game was Bradford, yeah. And you and you ended up there. I know, yeah, it was, yeah. Because they're a they're a massive club for that league, aren't they? Yeah, we will probably end up talking about them quite a bit, but yeah, I just I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that Mac, knowing what the Moss Rose is like, playing there and then going to Valley Parade and there's like eighteen, nineteen thousand. It's a Premier League ground. Yeah, like it's class. The atmosphere was rocking. I think it was like the first, first game of the season. I was like, I came on for, might have even been 10 minutes or something and passed it sideways three times, but I was buzzing like in my element. <laughs> just to be there. Just yeah. get a nice touch on it. and just... Yeah, yeah. It was honest, honest to God, I was buzzing. I, just, I remember like going home and just, I couldn't stop smiling for like a week. I was so excited. And like I say, it wasn't, it wasn't the financial. I th- to be honest, I think I might have even been on a page you play contract at that point. Right. So you only... You only get you 200 quid if you play. Yeah. So, yeah, like I played in front of 18,000. I'm getting 200 quid, like buzzing. So, yeah, like, shit that, isn't it? No, no, but at that age, though, that's all that counts. It's just becoming a professional and playing. Yeah, I didn't care. Playing about, in the league, innit? Yeah, I'm, I'm living at home with my mum and really. dad. I've got, I've got, well, I've got a car, but like my mum and dad have sorted me out with that. So I've got, I've got no, I've got no outgoings. I've got like a pay, like pay as you go phone, like. Bothered about the money. I just yeah. wanted to. I just wanted to be a footballer. It's all I ever wanted to do. So then to get a taste of playing in front of a big crowd, that was it. I was like made up. So how did how how did the move come about then to Bradford? So I got I got to the end of that um, second season. Second season. So I think I signed twelve months and then signed another twelve months and got to the end of that. And then I was getting quite a lot of interest from other clubs and. Um, was... Swindon, Walsall, <laughs> Shillingham, Radcliffe. What went to Bradford? <laughs> well, Lincoln was the like I was destined to go to Lincoln. Like it was the agreed deal and all that. And I went, I went and had a look around the city. Like beautiful place if you've ever been. Like really nice, yeah. good club. Uh, manager seemed really good. Peter Jackson showed me all around the ground and all that. And then Bradford came in. So I went down and they showed me all around the ground properly and all that. And obviously I played there they before. Didn't take like around Bradford, did they? What's that? They didn't take you around Bradford. No. No, you didn't want to sign. <laughs> no, no chance. <laughs> um, so yeah, they showed me around the ground and I was like, I've got to, I've got to sign here. Like it's it's good, really good. And then, yeah, signed a two-year deal. Started well, didn't it? First game. Why? Is that not the Accrington penalty? No, that's not. Oh. <laughs> that's not... No, that's that wasn't my first game. game. Oh, that would have been a fucking belter if it was. <laughs> yeah. So go that on, just like... talk through that because we mentioned it to you this morning, and you and you said, "Where have you got that information from?" It's actually on Wikipedia, <laughs> where you played against Accrington, and it says Evans missed the last minute penalty. Go on, you can elaborate on. <laughs> yeah. It didn't it didn't go well. I've obviously I've missed the penalty, but for some reason I can't remember if it was the disabled section was behind <laughs> the goal, the goal, or if it was just like someone going past in the wheelchair. Or whatever, but I've, I've leathered this penalty because it's absolutely hammering down. Pitch is a bargain. It's one all, and I'm like, I'm just going to smash it. Like I'm, I'm not going to place it because I'll slip. So I'm just going to smash it. 
So I've run up I and just leathered it, <laughs> leathered it right, and I've hit it sweet as a nut, honest to God. And it's gone woof, straight past the post and gone bang straight in this girl's face in a wheel. So, oh my God. <laughs> The whole, all the crowd are booing on my own side. Oh, booing because you missed or because you're uh, both, I think. <laughs> oh, imagine that. But, did, but didn't she have brittle bones or something? You broke yeah, a jaw. Yeah, she had brittle bones and I've broken a jaw or something. So I, had to go and get, I had to go and give her a signed shirt the week after, but I think she would have, she would have just thrown that in front of me. She would have took her some yogurts. <laughs> <laughs> what are the chances of that I come, I, honestly I couldn't add them and either it was unbelievable yeah that's so. not what you need that. missing oh, the last minute penalty. not just missing the last minute penalty to win the game but then hitting somebody <laughs> square in the jaw who's disabled and you break a jaw ah oh. yeah it's not good ethics is it really yeah that's not you that either Gaz is it no what missing pens no missing pens and just that hurting somebody yeah, yeah. no not at all no to be fair, I was devastated, obviously, because I missed the pen, but also obviously I ended up properly hurting a fan like. But it went viral, and this was like, you've probably got the year there. It's like 2009, 10. Yeah. So it wasn't even like Twitter or Facebook or social media was massive. It was obviously there, but it wasn't huge. But like, I think it got like half a million clicks on YouTube. Oh, oh, like, just imagine gone that. viral. Can we take that down? <laughs> just, but just imagine the person... <laughs> If if it's because I can't I can't think that the disabled section would be behind the goal. I just can't you never think know someone's club, playing mate. a trick like that. You never like, know. So I think someone penalty. Can you wheel me round so I can watch it? And that person who's wheeled them round has placed them in the wrong place. And <laughs> hit a square. Yeah, in the it's their fault, not yours, mate. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't take any of that. <laughs> Pass the blame. <laughs> Pass the blame. <laughs> Oh, oh, what a belt. To be honest, it had simmered down a little bit and diluted to the point where I forgot about it. And then you mentioned it before, and I was like, you bastards. <laughs> yeah, we were. Just, you so went. everyone's going to be on it now. Everyone that watches this is going to be on you. It's gonna, it's that's going to be half pen. a million views t- t- 15 years ago. I'd be like, it'd be 10 million by Monday. But the camera Hopefully. angle, right, is showing that showing it, and she sat there behind the goal. And you see the ball, like the video quality is not 4K or anything, obviously, but it's, it's gone straight into her face and she's just gone <laughs> like that. So it's like she's, she can see her above the advertising board just ahead. No way. And then she just disappears. I'm like, oh my God. She knocked out wor- of a, tra- a chair as well. Yeah. So it was bad at the time, but it looks worse on video. So I look, watched it back and I'm like, oh my God, what am I doing? <laughs> what am I so, doing? It's not your fault. <laughs> Right, oh. so and it's raining. You just to make it worse, it's raining, <laughs> sweat, yeah. Yeah. Cold, wet, belting down. So the final Belt whistle goes, and I'm trudging off, thinking I've well. killed someone. Oh god! I'm trying to get you off this one, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway. what a bell- how was uh, Peter Taylor? Old school, really old school. I didn't really see eye to eye with, with him, really. So he came in. Stuart McCall signed me at Bradford, and he was class. Loved him. He ended up signing me again when I went back a few years ago. Just, I'll just, uh, funny that you mentioned him because I was reading an article when I was driving down to Bristol the other day, like I stopped off at a services and it, it reminded me of, do you remember when he climbed on top of the car with a beer? Yeah, don't mention that to him. <laughs> oh, he ate oh, it now, no, don't have you seen it? Oh, yeah. Have, have you seen yeah. it? So, right, so I was reading the clip and then it said, um, blah, 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 blah. He's drunkenly, like the video when he climbed on top of the car with his, he had... So he's celebrating like this. I think they won the league, aren't they? Yeah. Something like that. And he, he's he got a he's got a beer, a pint of beer, and he climbs on top of this car to go like to cheer him. He slips, <laughs> falls, rolls off the top of his car, that stands up, he's not dropped a, a drop of his pint. He yeah. goes, whoa, <laughs> like that. You'll have to click on it. It's brilliant. I think he's got, I think he's actually got two cans. So He's, a, yeah. he's, he's fallen over and he's, he's not got anywhere to put his hands because he's got two tins. So he's like, he's preserving the beers, but he's like bailing at the same time. <laughs> he falls off and the top of the car. And he just goes bang on the roof and just falls off and then gets up and like plays it out. But if you mention But he that, hates it now, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. Because it's like, I think he feels like that goes before him. Yeah. In terms yeah. of his career and stuff. He became more famous for that than his career, which is bollocks. Like his career was a joke. Well, they, re- re- yeah. they reckoned that... Um, it stopped him from getting some of the big managerial jobs because I think he was in for Rangers and stuff like that at, at some point. Yeah, 
Maybe. And that yeah, so that's why it does it. Bra- it's brazy, yeah, that but, bit, yeah. Look at that, that's class. Oh, I'd be like, sign that man now. People loved him for it for a while, but then it's just... Yeah, but... He, as you get older, you look back, you're like, shit. <laughs> oh, I've done that. Yeah. But a few of the lads have mentioned it to him over the years. <clears throat> so we'd be... Like in a pre-match meeting, yeah, like, Gaffer, squeaky, what about yeah. that time when you did, like when you bailed off the car? Like it's funny, wasn't it? It's like fuck off, you little prick. You're not playing on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> and you just walk out like you can't mention it to him. He yeah, hates that. it. I feel a little bit sorry for him because it has gone before him a little bit, but he was class. I loved him. Really good. A little bit like your video will go before you pretty soon. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> a bit like your video will go before you. Yeah. Pretty soon. Yeah, once, yeah. Once we get this out on YouTube. When you tweet your retirement, I'm just going to put that underneath. <laughs> <laughs> just the link. <laughs> Highlights. <laughs> so what was that like then playing for Bradford? Because obviously the, there must be a lot of expectation on the players. Yeah, it was good. It was good. Well, the first They're year... They're still in League Two now. Yeah. They've, they've been there a long time, haven't they? It's, it's such like, a big, big club. Yeah. It's hard to put your finger on what's wrong with that club, but something is seriously not right. Yeah, because I, I took a player there and met Mark Hughes, like sat down, uh, Mark Hughes, is, that, is it Mark Hughes? It was Mark yeah, Hughes. Yeah, yeah, right. Mark, Mark Hughes. Like, sat down yeah. with him and he was talking about, obviously, like, they're going to win the league, they're bringing in these players, the budget and stuff like that. And I was like, you sat there in the stadium, which, like you said, it's a Premier League stadium. They get eighteen to 20,000 fans yeah. in League Two. They just can't... They, can't go, just can't, can't yeah. go anywhere. There's just something about that football club that just the number of players, the list of players that's like that that turn up with ridiculous pedigree, like played in the Prem, played in yeah. the Champ, and then they go down to there and they think, well, it's a good ground, they do things right, blah de blah, and they turn and they just don't perform. And it's like there's there's a common denominator here, and it's nothing to it's not the players. And I'm not just saying that because at times I haven't performed for the club, but honest to God, there's just so many players just turn up there and just don't don't perform and I don't know what it is it's like the the training ground is just they just train at a school they, have, they don't they haven't got a training ground they just train at like a put like a private school at right. the other end of Appley Bridge it's got Woodhouse Grove School so they just train there and um so that they train there when I was 21 22 when I first went there and then I went back a couple of years ago and I remember like I signed and I'm like Gaffer like where's the training ground and he's like you know where the training ground is I'm like still the same training ground like, Appley Bridge he was like yeah I'm like fuck you know, it's not the same place and it's just a school they like 10 just years rent- later yeah. Like, yeah they've not not moved on in any way shape or form Mad because like, like, cause they must be paying some wages out I think that yeah well that's what's what it is I think they just they preserve the money so they haven't got a training ground so they don't they don't spend money on facilities the ground hasn't changed the jot in no. 15 years it's not changed nothing it's exactly this probably in 20 years it's not it's not changed so that's not where they spend the money they just They'll go and sign someone for like seven, eight grand a week and hope, hope for the best. Through, that he's yeah. The, yeah, hope that he's the answer. Yeah. And it never works like that because there's 10 other players on the pitch. So that's where the money goes, I think. But there's serious problems with the hierarchy at that club, definitely. Did you enjoy your time there? Was it difficult? You First go... year was good. I loved it. So it was something new again. So I was playing in front of big crowds and you felt like a proper player. There was a proper like buzz when you go out and play and... <clears throat> yeah, I loved it, and it went well. I think I scored. I think I scored twelve. So le- yeah, eleven goals. Eleven, twelve Maybe goals. Yeah, it, yeah. Was, um, it was good. It was like a really good year. And then the year after, like I say, Stuart had gone and Peter Taylor had come in, and everything had changed. It was all really old school, like proper old school. And it was just, it was just different. They did that massive budget cut again. They'd slashed the budget in half. So we were signing players that didn't really have any pedigree. We were, they were just like non-league hopefuls that we were hoping would like come to fruition at Bradford and it never happened. Could have been you, Jordan. Could have been me. Should have been me. Nine could've, promotions, mate. Could have, would have, should have. got nine non-league promotions. not counting nine promotions, mate. You're not counting pub leagues, are you? <laughs> Northwest counties. Yeah, you're not counting that. <laughs> Northwest counties. You're not counting that. Yeah, but at some point someone's got to go, this lad's got eight promotions here. Let's have a, let's have a look at him. Well, they have done John and Bernard. They're stuck by you. That's what they've done. <laughs> Oh, it'll never happen again, that. Not, not Well, you had your chance where you went to failed, went full-time. No, full-time's not for me. You couldn't handle it. No. Why? Just didn't look like the opposite Same of as you. Me. The opposite of you. Yeah. No, because he couldn't drink. He couldn't have a kebab on a Tuesday. That's... No, so like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it is. No, obviously, if I'd have got the chance younger, I would have been sound. But when I went at 29... 
He wanted them because you had a body like a worm when you were like <laughs> 21. I'm not asked anyway. I've had a good time. I remember uh, the first time he took his top off on the bus. You must have been 24 ish when I was. Not, how old are you now? How old 33. Now? 33. So eight years ago when I was at 25. So 25. He, he, had, he had the body of a student. He had no pecs. <laughs> flat no as pecs chest, at all. Mate. Flat as chest Still not. ever. <laughs> Tiny list like Mr. Burn arms and a little pot belly, didn't you? And yeah. I was like, who is this kid? And then I look at him, machine. To be fair, later, though, I've watched you for the last nine months, how you conduct yourself off the pitch, and I'm like, how's he not 20 stone him? <laughs> what is you? Yeah. <laughs> You're literally like a dustbin, mate. Like any foods around you, just hoover it up. <laughs> And like, drink. Yeah, Mind like ten, after we, every game, there's 10 pints go down. And I'm like, why is he not massive? Like, what's he doing in his spare time? Just <laughs> I thought he was going to say, you sh- you, like, I've watched you and you should be in the league. <laughs> and he just said, <laughs> nah, I'm not you giving you that. You should be 20 pick. still. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you've played, you you played thinking, all right. But... He's going to big me up here because I've really improved what I'm like <laughs> off, off the pitch. No, I knew that weren't coming. Um, so we've got a coach now, Clarkie, and... Clark, you used to play for Salford. Yeah. Curly air. Yeah, I remember him. Yeah, yeah. So. Oh, yeah, I've just described it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Clarky. But for some reason this year, he's just turned into like a full on alky. And he's just like, <laughs> after every training session, he has to have loads of pints. He's put on three stone. Or... <laughs> Is it actually three season, stone? He's put on like two or three stone. So he was j- always a big. John kid anyway, dog didn't he? last night saying. <laughs> Like, look at a figure on Clarky or something. And he just lifted his top up. He went, what about that, lad? His belly, mate, is massive. And he used to be like, do you remember how he used yeah, to he be? Yeah, he used to be, yeah. 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 He was a good footballer as well. Class. Yeah. Technique's really good. Yeah. yeah. So at the start of pre-season, he was in quite good nick. Like, you wouldn't say he like ripped or anything like that, but he looked after himself a little bit. But then as the season's gone on, he's just got like, let himself Fatter go a little bit. And the other night, he's like, he's doing... We're doing waves of attack or something, aren't yeah. we? And he's got the ball and he's like, he's got the technique. So he's like spun it backwards and zinged it. And I've just heard his thighs go like that. <laughs> I'm like, oh. Clap together. <laughs> oh. And no one said anything. And I'm thinking, I'm not going to say anything here because he's going to melt. What a yeah, guy. He's, he just, he's a not an ass one bit. He's, yeah, ledge. He's just a good coach now. Big shout out to Clarkie. Go on, Clarkie, you put in. <laughs> She's like, what's well, Rico? Jimmy five bellies, Clarky eight bellies. <laughs> right, so Bradford, Bradford ended that season. Didn't yes. You, you you got put forward though for goal of the season. Yeah, this is how long ago it were. Mitre, <laughs> goal mitre of goal of the year. Yeah, yeah. I don't do mitre still do footballs. Don't know. But anyway, outside soccer sports. Ago. I was, uh, yeah, I got runner up. It was a peach, to be fair. Was it? But I scored two in that, ga- in that game. That was the first. That was the first year, I think, I was at Bradford. <clears throat> scored two again. We beat Northampton two 0 and I scored both. So the first one, the balls come over. Oh no, sorry, like five minutes before, one of the young lads, Leon Osborne's got the ball. Leon Osborne, not Leon Osborne, who ended up at Everton. No, right. no, he was like, <laughs> I was gonna say, he like went into the abyss. Is he but... called Leon, Leon Osborne? <laughs> no. Leon Osman. Osman, yeah. Leon, all right, Tash. <laughs> well, so he's got the ball. That far like, off, no, no. He's got the ball and it's bobbling around and like thirty yards out, but he's turned and smacked it and it's gone right over the stand. And I'm thinking, you fucking dickhead, like what are you doing? Like just pass me the ball. So then the next time the goalkeeper's got the ball, he booted it over and it's come to me and it's almost like an exact what Leon's just tried to do. So I've chested it and swiveled from like thirty yards out and hit it on the half volley. And it's gone boom, straight into the top corner. And even I was like, you know, like, I didn't expect that. Like, absolute, like, best, best goal you've ever scored, I think. Yeah. I'll have to get that goal up. Yeah. It was like, straight after I've, so I, yeah, so I I've watched the penalty miss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Make a little collab. So the second goal, our winger's like gone down and he's like chipped it over. And I'm like 15 yards out or something. And I've got. Over a kick and it's gone in the top corner. So I'm like, I'm coming off at the end and I'm thinking, I don't know which goal's better. Like they're both belters. <laughs> like, couldn't believe that I'd scored these two goals. But yeah, I ended up going down to London and so which one got like, it? The half volley or the over a yeah, kick? Yeah, the half volley. Um, I can't remember what won it now, but I went down to London and had like a massive do in London with the PFA and 
yeah, it was class. But yeah, that was like pretty much the only thing that came on my Bradford time. <laughs> <laughs> and then you end up, end up joining wise. Yorkshire rivals, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. So we got to the end of that season and they were, Bob Bradford were under massive financial problems. Like there was one point in that season where the manager's come in and we it was on payday on a Friday and he's come in and he's gone. Uh, I know you haven't been paid, lads, but um, if you're on if you're on under a thousand pounds a week, you'll, the money will be in your bank by the end of the day. Anyone else is going to get a check. But then the chief execs come marching in, and he hasn't realised that the gaffer's briefed us on what what's happening. Yeah. So he's come in and he's just giving out three checks like that. He's giving me one and two other lads. So, <laughs> so all, all, all the lads all are know. thinking, yeah, all the other lads are like, well, you you three are on like okay money but it wasn't like mind-blowing money but the rest like all the lads are thinking well everyone knows that i'm on crap all money now grand. but it, at the time i remember thinking like we're getting 18 19 like you said before guys it's like you're getting 18 19 thousand fans why is the lads on buttons yeah for that level five six hundred quid a week yeah like why and it just it opened my eyes to think that they're, they're literally running on a shoestring here that was an awkward meeting that uh what, what was said the after? Yeah, with the lads. Yeah, so I was just like... I'd have been buzzing, me, <laughs> But I... Waving it around. <laughs> oh, I'd <laughs> go like, whoa, I'm warm in here. Can I go and cash this check before I, before I drop it on my toe and break Anyone it? need a borrow? <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was. It was proper awkward. But I think those three were also looking at each other thinking these checks are bouncing. Like, they're giving us a check for a reason. They're obviously, they're waiting for a bit of cash to come in so yeah. it'll clear. Anyway, it cleared, but it was just opened my eyes to what the what the club was running on at that time. <clears throat> and then Peter Jackson took over from Peter Taylor. He took me in the office at the end of the season. He was like, listen, we're cutting the budget again, cutting it in half again. I'm not even going to offend you by offering you what we're going to offer you. It's going to be half what you're on. Go and find another club. Go and play somewhere else. If you're desperate, then come back kind of thing, but... I don't know if it was a roundabout way of saying you binned. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> a nice way. Yeah. yeah. But I've been coming back a month later. I've, I've had a look round. I'll, I'll take, I'll take your thoughts on. Take his back. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Shut the blinds. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah. So I just I went and went went away that summer and just weighed up all my options and went and signed for Rotherham. Rotherham. Two goals on your debut. Where are you yeah. playing at this point? You still up front? Left wing. Left wing. <laughs> <laughs> Moved out to left wing. He's yeah. a centre mid now. I know. You've said it before. Yeah. Well, he's not. He's well, not playing. Yeah. <laughs> he's a, he's bench, a if I'm lucky. Yeah, bench, <laughs> lucky. Um, yeah, so I think that must have been like two or three games into the start of pre-season. And, uh, sorry, in, into the season, we had Plymouth away. And he brought, he, I think it was the first game that I started, like you say, and I scored two. And then it just it went from there, really. But Andy Scott, the manager, Simon, and he was he, the pre-season was a blast. It was like really tough. So well, every hard, day you look, hard pre season, yeah, you mean? Really tough. So he would just like randomly say, Right, run. And you just set off around the pitch and you're just running and running and running. And then there's like sprints up and down. Like every day was like, I was getting home and I was honest to God, I couldn't even stand up. But I got to the end of pre season, I was so fit. It was a joke. He was like massive on the weights and the core and all this. I was like so fit. It was a joke. And I Is was that best like, you felt yeah. like going into a start of a season? Then? Physically, yeah, pretty much. Graham Alexander was good with it as well. He got me in really good nick. But that was one season where I remember coming into it and I'm like, you know, you feel, you feel really confident, don't you? Every game you, you think, I'm going to make don't, or score a goal. Don't, or, you might as well look no, at me, don't. yeah. yeah, don't look yeah. At me. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I'm flying. Just, I think I get to like October, November, I've scored six or seven goals. I'm either, I'm either scoring or assisting every game. Like, I'm, I'm on fire. Yeah. And then um, I'd agreed a deal to go to Watford in January. It was like done deal pretty much. And Watford are in? Champ at that time. Right. I think they were like third in the champ or something. So I'm like, this, like my career's like, it's coming together, like finally. Yeah. And then, um, then we play Bradford away and I come off after like 12 minutes. And it was just like... Got like, subbed off. No, injured. Just like, so obviously I've gone back to Bradford and it's the first time that I've gone back there since I played there. And by the end, like at Bradford, I was getting pelters and that, like the fans were just like, acid. Just, yeah, acid, just battering everyone. So I've gone back and I'm like, I'm going to prove a point here. Like I've, I'm come, I'm turning up, I've scored all these goals, like player of the month a couple of times. Like I'm on, like I'm in really good shape. 
So then we're in the tunnel and um, we're lining up to go out and I'm looking, there's like absolutely packed, like 20,000 fans there. And I'm like, I'm going to prove to all these, like I'm going to get my own back. And we're stood in the tunnel and I've never said anything to any of the Rotherham lads about any of the Bradford lads. Never, like I spoke about the club and like how good it is with the fans and stuff like that. Yeah. Nothing about any of the team or anything. And Dale Tong, one of the lads, is stood at the front of the line and I'm he's like third in line and I'm at the back. And he's looking at their skipper, Michael Flynn, and I played with Michael Flynn. I was in his car school and out of Bradford. Anyway, Dale's turned around and he's gone, you're right about Flynn, he is a fat cunt, isn't he, Gaz? <laughs> Oh, no. And I'm stood down like, oh. <laughs> it's not what and you need, Flynn, is it? Flynn, he's turned around like this. <laughs> Steam coming out of his ears. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, this isn't... This and isn't, you haven't said it. He's never just, said a no. word, I swear to God. Never, I'd never say a word, bad word about him. And, um, yeah, so we've gone out to play, and I'm thinking, I'll oh, just forget about it. Like, we move on kind of thing. And I hit the bar after, like, two games. I'm playing really well. After two minutes, like, playing really well. And then I get the ball on the edge of our box and I take a big touch and I look out the corner of my eye and Michael Flynn's fucking steaming towards me. I'm like chasing after the ball and I get there just in front of him, but he just goes like, ah, bang, it just takes me out. My ankle's like planted in the ground and just, just literally just fucking. So he's done you there then? Done me massively, yeah. <laughs> deliberately. Because of what Tongi had said in the tunnel. And what was the injury? So it was like I'd done all my deltoid, ligaments done all the outside ligaments i'm pretty sure i never got an x-ray but i'm pretty sure i must have broken it it was like it was so i got up and tried to i couldn't even walk they took me off after 12 minutes and that was like how long was you out for then well i came back after two months but i came back too early and then and obviously you, you've missed you've missed your chance to go to watford i'm guessing then well it, it, i think that I came back before Christmas, so I'm thinking, well, the January transfer window is still open. Right, but obviously, okay. they haven't been watching me all this time for like two months. And then I came back too early. I think we went to like Cheltenham away or something, and I'm carrying my ankle around the pitch like I'm not fit. And then my quads, because I'm carrying my ankle, my quad's just blown. So I'm like, I've done my quad. And then I came back from that too early and did my quad again. And then I came back and did it again. And so I'm out for like, I come back for like a game or two every now and again. Yeah. But by and large, I'm out for like four months. And then the manager gets the sack. And then that's that. And then the Watford thing was just in the water, like dead in the water. So oh, just... it was like, I look back now and I was like, that was a career defining moment. Now. Yeah. Because if I went there, it would have been, I was, I was off and away then. That yeah. guy in the tunnel's done you. Yeah. Tongi. Yeah. yeah. He's like a first team coach at Stockport. And that was a proper ledge guy, Tongi. But he's like, he's obviously just done it for a bit of banter. But well, he's done it just to yeah, just to... Yeah, yeah and then Flynn himself's head. just like oh. proper dummy. But he's a big unit as well, so it's like yeah. a believable statement. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> he's a fat yeah. cunt kind of thing. <laughs> so, oh. yeah, so it kill, it's killed me. And then that was it. And then Andy Scott got the sack and Steve Evans came in and I was like, oh, my God. Talking to like, talking bellies. <laughs> talking of fat cunt. <laughs> Cut that. <laughs> 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 I was, I was Steve Evans then. Different, he must be a different, I, I, I don't know how he manages. Like, like I've never. I've <laughs> what never, manages like? <laughs> no, no, I mean, like I've never sports, but I don't know what his management style's like. Wild. Is like, it? Yeah, he's just, he's a hundred or nothing. Like if, you, if you're around him, he's just, just shouts constantly. But to be honest, when he first came in, I think because, because he knew that he was coming into a squad of players that he needed to keep on board between when he came in and the end of the season, he was sound. He was really good. So he was... Did you like him as a manager? Yeah, when he first came in, I, I did. So I was playing and he would like go out of his way to come and ask me how I'm doing and he wanted to know about my personal life with my missus and where I'm living and this, that and the other. So I was like, well, what everyone's on about, about this Steve Evans, like he's fucking top man, like really good. Yeah. And then it gets to that summer and I think it was obvious that he'd waited three or four months just to get to the summer and then anyone that's out of contract, like, just move them on and I'm getting my own players in. So it gets to the end of the season, he has all the meetings and stuff and he's like, really like you guys, we're going to extend your contract, we're going to give you another two years. So I'm like, right, okay, yeah, buzzing. And um, the contract comes through and it's like, it's more money and but there's a clause in it to say you've got to live within 20 minutes of the New York Stadium. You had like this thing where you had to live t within 20 minutes I of where the ground is. I think we've heard that before, is. haven't we, about him? You have to live local, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
But I was living in Worsley, so I was driving over the tops and it was taking me like over an hour to get there. I'm in a car school with like three or four other lads. <clears throat> That's like, is that Snakes Pass over that kind of thing? Yeah, okay. well, yeah, Woodhead. Yeah, well, yeah Woodhead, same yeah. thing really, yeah. yeah. So you're going all the way over the top. Anyway, he didn't like it, so he wanted you to live within the 20 minutes of the ground. Wow, he's from crazy. there as well, isn't he? Is it? No, he's from Peterborough, I think. Oh, is he? I think oh, so, right. yeah. You're not moving, are you? I moved. Did you? Yeah, because it was like, you can only sign this contract if you move. So I got like, got like eight grand relocation money and all the standard stuff. So I'm not being funny. I if moved. You, if you live in Worsley and then you move into Doncaster, Doncaster, move to Doncaster yeah, yeah. You, you could probably sell your house and buy a street over there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just renting. So it was easy because I was just renting in Worsley, just move out of there and move over to Doncaster. It wasn't that big of a deal. I think, I think if I was living in my own house and that, it would be difficult. But yeah, so I moved to Doncaster and but like Rotherham had, the first year that I was there, they were at the Don Valley Stadium, which was like an athletics track, and they were waiting for the new ground to be built. And when Steve came in that year, we moved into the new ground. So it was a brand new ground. I had more money. I'm living in Doncaster, like loving it. Love the football club. Yeah. All the fans are great with me. I've done really well in the first year, albeit I've been injured for four months. Like, new two-year deal, let's go kind of thing. And then by October, I was done. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. You just switched one day. So I started the season. I was playing really well. and But you'd always have this thing where I'd be like, I'd be thinking I'm going to score or make a goal this game. And then it'd get to like 65, 70 minutes and it'd just take me off every time. And I don't know what it was. It was There was no logic to it. But he would just, every game, it'd be like, if someone's coming off, it's me. But he always started me. And I was playing all the time. I scored two against Bradford. So Bradford came back to the New York Stadium. We beat them 4-0 and I scored two. So I was like loving Buzzing, life. Yeah. class. And then... Um, Turn that one flare. <laughs> <laughs> Fat idiot. <laughs> so, yeah, I was like, I'm really enjoying playing for this club. Like, with me and the missus are really happy. Hazel's really happy. Like, we're proper chuffed to be here. And then he took me out for a couple of, couple of games. It's a long story, this. This is like the exit to my brother. It's a long one, but... He took me out for a couple of games and um, I'm like, why is he taking me out? I can't really understand it. He didn't speak to me. He didn't tell me anything. But every day he's like, he's different from last season. He's every day is chaos. He's like shouting constantly. If he's in the training ground, you know it because you can just hear his voice all the time. Yeah. screaming. So he took me out for a couple of games and then the lad that he put, I can't remember who he put, put in, but the lad that was playing in front of me got injured. So then we had dagging him away on the Saturday. And all that week, I'm in the team shape. I'm taking all the set pieces. It gets to the Friday. I'm like, I'm back in. Like, that was just a bit of my management. He was keeping me on my toes. So. <laughs> he weren't. <laughs> so he goes on the Friday. He gets us all together doing the set plays. I'm taking them all. He's like, right, Gaz is on pens. So I'm like, I'm right back in the mix here. Like, drive all the way down to Dagenham thinking, like, doing it all right, getting my sleep in and everything. Does the team shape? I'm playing like at the hotel on the team meeting day of the game. Does the team shape? I'm playing on the right. So I'm like, yeah, buzzing, like starting, like back in. Here we go. Turn up at the ground, right? And walk in the dressing room, and there's some lad in the corner dressed in his own gear. And I start putting two and two together. I'm thinking, what's he doing? It like, who's this? He's like, hiya, Luke Rooney. And I'm like, hey, Gaz. He's like, yeah, I've just signed. I'm like, right. What position? Yeah, what and I'm, position? Thinking, I'm thinking if anyone's getting binned, it's me. So I start thinking this is something's up here. And then the gaffer comes in and he's like, God, lads, this is this is Luke Rooney. Uh, he's going to be our best right winger moving forwards and all this. And I'm thinking, I'm playing right wing here. What's going on? So he puts the team shape up and I'm on the bench. And I'm just oh. like, you fucking having me off here. So he's had you in the shape. As like a dummy. I'm taking the really? pens, mate. Yeah. I'm taking the pens. For I'm him. like, how have I gone from taking the pens to like sat on the Judy? Like, how's he done that? Judy but he's Dench. Signed... <laughs> you get that? Yeah. yeah. I'm not a... Judy Dench bench. Yeah. Jord. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just, it's just that vacant look you it's have there. Full, so. full time bad like that. <laughs> <laughs> Gimps. <laughs> so anyway, oh, he signs this Luke Rooney. Absolute like, pie, I'm, yeah. Yeah. Massive pie. And I'm like, he's he wants me out. He's making an example of me here. Yeah. So the game starts and we this lad's miles off it. He has he's been he's come on loan from Swindon, but he's two stone overweight. He's got nowhere near the ball. Like you think he might have touched it twice all half, and we're three 0 down at half time. Oh. And I'm on the bench thinking, you reap what you sow, you little bell end like <laughs> twat. 
deserve what you get kind of thing. Yeah. But then I'm warming up on the pitch and then Rainsy, Paul Rain has come out as assistant. He's gone, Gaz, come in, you're going on. So I've run in, I've got my kit on, got my boots on, got my pads on, I'm ready to go. And he, Gaffer gets his whiteboard out, which is already smashed all over the place at half time. So he's picking all the bits up, puts them all up to shape. Gaz, you're there. It's like coming on at left back. <laughs> like, what are you on about? Here's like a three nil down at, away at Dagenham. We need a goal. I'm going on at left back. Like, what are you, t- what are you doing? So I'm like, <sighs> so I don't make a scene and I just think I'm just going to go out and yeah. do my best kind of thing. So then the half starts and like the ball comes over and I zing one out to the right winger and he like goes in and crosses it in and we don't score, but something comes of it. But is this I'm Rooney like, still? Is Rooney still on here? No, he's took him off. Right. He's, put, he's, put, he's put the left back on the right wing and put me at left back. <laughs> so I'm like, Cheers, like just proper stitch up. But I'm trying to make the most of it. So I'm like trying to zing balls out and like skipping, pad, like zipping them, like reversing them round into midfield, just making the most of playing there. But I'm not a left back, like never in a million years. But then there's a melee in the middle of the pitch. And Jason Taylor, one of the lads, has like smashed one of their lads and the balls bobbled to me. So I've like skipped past the right winger and I've noticed that the Dagenham lad stayed down and he's like rolling round, like injured. So I've like tapped it off. And turn round and like the uh, like this is on the side of where the dugouts are, so I've gone to the side of the pitch and I'm like get a water like while he gets his treatment and all that and the ground's silent and I just hear what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> so I'm like what the going on here? Like is he talking to me and he's like you ever what the fuck are you doing? So I'm like what? It's a good accent actually. Is he he's like yeah, he's got <laughs> excuse me, Scottish accent here. Yeah. He's like what the fuck are you doing? He's like you've just come on the pitch and you're having a fucking drink of what? I'm like, well, yeah, the guy's down in. He's like, and then you kick it off. We need a goal and you're kicking the ball off. Like going mad. I'm like, it's just good sportsmanship. I'm thinking he's like, the whole ground's watching because the whole stand's behind the dugouts and they're all watching. I'm like, well, he's going in on me here. He's making an example of me again. I've had a bad week. I'm like, I don't need this. And he's like, do you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, yes, gaffer. He's like, you don't know what I'm saying, do you? You don't know what I'm fucking saying. Keep the ball in play. He's like, yes, Gaffer. He's like, you don't know what I'm saying. And this, the mist is going down at this point. And I've gone, oh, fuck off, Steve. Like that. And I've gone, oh. Oh, no. no. <laughs> as soon as you said it. <laughs> yeah. As soon as I've said it, I've gone, oh, no. All the stand behind are laughing. <laughs> the bench are like this. All of our bench are like this. And then Rainsy, the, the, the assistants turn around and he's thinking, why, what has he just said there? And I'm like, that's oh not like God. you, is it? No, like it takes no. a lot to put me in a corner and like for me to lash out. So it was like everything had just accumulated and I've just gone, fuck off, Steve. And he didn't say a word. The fourth official's laughing his head off. And I'm like, this is getting worse. Don't you yeah. start. <laughs> yeah, <you're> mad, Billy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he's like, he's not said a word. So the game's carried on. And the rest of the half normally, if you know Steve Evans, he goes mad on the side of the pitch. He's not said a word. There's like oh, half you an... know you're in for it, yeah. 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 So <laughs> half a, there's a half an hour left in this game, and I'm on that side of the pitch as well, trying to do my best at left back. We lose five 0 get dicked. <laughs> so I'm like, I just made it worse. And he's not said a word the whole half. And I'm like, I'm getting it here. So I walk in and sit down. And I'm just like How nerve wracking like, is it though? Yeah, when you, when you know, know you're getting a bollock in. You know you're gonna get a bollock in. And all your teammates, are like, oh, I used to hate that. Yeah, I just, I knew that it was coming, but I've got in the dressing room and sat down and the whole time I'm thinking, don't say anything, don't say anything, just leave it. But I'm like, got my hands up, my arms on my elbows here, I'm just looking down and then I hear the door slam. I just hear, I just see these two bastard winkle pickers here. And just, <laughs> just, so I'm like, oh no. And I look up like this and he's there. 40 minutes he went at me, mate, like, Proper, just minutes. emptied me out. Never said anything about the game, nothing about the goals, nothing about the result. Just honestly unloaded on me. Every name under the sun, you name it. Most of it's just went over my head because I was just like, once you've been called a cunt, that's it. Like, you know, just <laughs> smoke, like, I'm not arse kind of thing. But the top and bottom of it was the last few sentences was like, you be in my office tomorrow morning, eight o'clock, with your track suit and your club suit. You'll never play for me again. So I'm like, fucking hell. So the whole way home on the bus, I'm like texting my agent saying, get me out, I need a new club. <laughs> like I'm done. Texting my missus, we're moving house again. Pack your stuff. 
like all this stuff's going on. And then, yeah, so I've got up the next day and I've got to the training ground at like half seven and I'm sat in the car for like 20 minutes thinking, what am I going to say here? Like, how's this going to pan out? But I'm thinking at the same time, I'm thinking, I'm not apologising. He's treating me like an absolute dickhead yeah. there. I'm not apologising. So I've got out of my car and I've like got my club suit and my track suit like this. And I'm like walking to the, walk into the offices, right? Open the door and Andy Dibble, the goalkeeping coach is there, like the old Man City goalkeeper like ledge like buzzed off him and he's gone you'll be all right son I'm like, right okay so i'm like this like holding my tracksuit and club suit walking knock on the door he's like is that fucking you ever <laughs> i'm like yeah he's like come in so i've come in and i'm like this i'm looking at my gear and i'm like i look at him and i'm like, I'm like oh. mate he's got sausage roll in his mouth <laughs> he's got pastry all down him like this he's got a bag of minstrels on the go and a can of iron brew and I'm like, I'm like, have I got the time right here? Like, it's eight o'clock on a Sunday morning and he's like munching on a sausage roll, like <laughs> covered in pastry. So he's got his Rotherham jumper on and it's like Rotherham badge, Puma badge, SE and just fucking pastry everywhere, mate. <laughs> and I'm like, you slob. Like, like he's minging. <laughs> so, I, so I sit down and I'm like, he's like, sit down. He's like, Rainsy. So he like gets Rainsy's number two to come in and sit down. Didn't want to do it on his own. And he just goes around the houses for ages. But he basically, he was like, do you think it was that special to speak to me like that? And I was like, well, the gaffer, I went on and on about what had, ever, what had happened throughout the week and Luke Rooney's in the changing room. And like, then you've brought me on at left back. And this is like, I don't give a fuck. I'm manager. I'll do what I want. But he's expecting me to say sorry. So we go on for ages and then he's gone. Darren Ferguson, manager of Peterborough. If one of his players speaks to him like that, does he or does he not sack him? And I'm like, well, I don't know Darren, Pe <laughs> Darren Ferguson. Why are you asking me that? So I haven't got a clue. So like, maybe, maybe not. And he's like, tell you what, we'll ask Debs. So Andy Dibbles, like, work with Darren Ferguson at Peterborough. So he's like, Debs, get in here. And I'm thinking, I'm mates with Debs. He's like one of my pals. So we lived in Wilmslow. So we used to go over the Snakes Pass all the time together. And like after home games, we'd stop off and have a pint. I know everything about his family. He knows everything about my family. We're good mates. So I'm thinking, you, you fucked yourself here bringing Dibs in because... He's going to back he's, me up. He's going to back me up. He's one of my mates. So he's like, Debs, one of uh, Darren Ferguson's players speaks to him like that. Does he sack him on the spot? Yes or no? And I'm looking at Evans thinking, what a stupid mate, because he's just going to back me. And Dibs goes... Yeah, he'd sack him on the spot, gaff. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, oh. cheers. Dibs, are you fucking sure, mate? Like, what are you doing? Proper, like, pick me up, spun me around and throw me under the bus. So I'm like, I'm done. And uh, yeah, we went around the houses and he, he expected me to apologise. And he was like, I tell you what, I'm not going to sack you, but you'll never play for me again. Leave your tracksuit and your club suit there. You'll never play for me again. Go home and think about what you've done. So like the rest of the lads are on the pitch training. I've just got in my car and driven off. And then Jabo, one of the lads has rung me after and he's like a proper gossip, Jason Taylor. And he's like, what did he say? What was said? Blah, de blah. <laughs> and like, just that I'll never play for the club again. I, that's all he said, really. He was like, well, he's got all the lads on the training pitch that day. And he said, Evo's apologized profusely. He said, sorry, three or four times and there's no problem moving forwards. <laughs> so I'm like... That's not what I took out of the meeting. And he was like, Dave was like, what did you take from the meeting? I'm like, well, I'm never going to play for the club again. And he likes a fucking sausage roll on a Sunday morning. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And then for the next few weeks, I was just, the lads would be doing training and I'd be at the side of the pitch just running up and down on my own. The lads would be doing... You just have your training on your own? Yeah, yeah. That? So I was just doing passing, they were doing passing drills, possessions, games, small sides, team shape, whatever, set pieces. The whole time for two hours, I'm just running up and down on my own on the side of the pitch. Oh, I can't do it. Non-stop. That, do went, it. that went on for like... My head gone. Run, I couldn't run for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> but I, yeah, my head would be gone. No, you, you'd be in the office eating sausage rolls yeah. with him. <laughs> Get us two next week. Yeah, save us half, Scaffer. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah, so, but then, I can't remember what happened, but it was something like... I came, he brought me back in at one point for one game. I think it was like Wickham at home or something... Yeah, he, he got me back involved with the first team and I'm training. And then I've, I came on at half time for that game. But then after that, it was like, I couldn't work with him moving forwards. It was done. And you ended up 
so that's that's it. You're, you're leaving, and then in January, so you must have joined Fleetwood 2013. I think I must have left in in the summer 2012. So like six I, months before me. Yeah, six months before you joining, because you that's there. That's when we won the league and gone up to League Two. Yeah. And then you signed in League Two. Who was that, Mickey Mellon? Mickey Mellon, yeah. Yeah, so it was Graham Alexander had just took an, took taken right. over. I was yeah. his first signing. Lucky escape there. Yeah, so it got to the, got to the window, 1st of Jan, 9 o'clock, 1st of Jan. I'm out of the building. I just went and signed for Fleetwood. I had 18 months left on my Rotherham contract, I think. Just cancelled it there and then didn't take a penny. Couldn't wait to go. Didn't pay you up? I, to be honest, I think... If I'd have held out for like a few weeks and made it awkward towards the end of the window, I might have got a few quid, but I was that desperate out. to leave. So seven or eight months, I signed for Fleetwood and then seven or eight months down the line, on the way to a home game and I'm in a car, so I've got a couple of lads in the car. Who? We, so who were there then? Who, like, who, were Jamie Maguire there? Jamie Maguire was there. Andy Mangan. Mangs, yeah. Uh, trying to think Junior. of other, Junior Brown. Junior Brown. Um, Keeper. I don't know if David Butt was David Ball there with you, or was that no, just after you? Just after. Uh, so who was the keeper? keeper? Scott Davis. Scott Davis, yeah, keeper, yeah. Top man, Scott, yeah. yeah. So, the, yeah, pretty yeah. much the same squad that yeah, had good. you, really, yeah. yeah. It was good. Vardy, had, Vardy had left in the summer, and he to Leicester. Yeah. That's why they got uh, Gazzy. You what? Gaz was his replacement. Well, no, obviously, well, I was thinking if I had left six months before, they brought him, obviously, wanted somebody else to. Model the kits and another do the calendar. Good-looking good gals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, we need another good-looking gals. Who can we fetch in? <laughs> Evo, he don't play it much, but he's, <laughs> he's a good-looking lad. Brilliant so, club. Uh, Brilliant club. Yeah, Go on yeah anyway, really six, enjoyed it. So, yeah, so like, seven or eight months down the line, I'm driving to the game and we've like, got two lads in the car. It's a home game and we're on the M6 and there's been a massive smash. It's not like the M6. No, no. no. Fucking so up. we get stuck. And I'm looking at the time and I'm thinking, we're going to be late for the warm up here. Like, this is an issue. I said to the lad, I tell you what, I'll ring the gaffer and let him know because we're going to get fined anyway. I'll ring the gaffer and let him know. So I've gone on, gone on my Bluetooth, gone down to phone book, press gaffer, like, drive, like, just like sat in traffic, not moving. Rings a few times and the gaffer picks up. He goes, All right, Evo, how are you? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, <laughs> oh no. And then I'm thinking, like, my cogs are turning now, and I'm thinking, that's not Graham Alexander, that, like. So, and then I've realised I've still got Steve Evans in my phone box, saved as gaffer. Yeah. And the lads are, like, looking at me like, who's this? <laughs> so gaffer is in his Graham Alexander. So it's fucking idiot. I'm staring at the road for, like, 10 seconds go by, and I'm staring at the tarmac thinking, what do I say here? Like, I'm, and I just go, oh, fuck off, Steve. <laughs> Put the phone down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like I've come across him a few times since then and we just pie each other oh really like, yeah it's not even like hey how you doing just, so, just walk past each that's other brilliant. So. you aren't even you aren't even wanted to batter him but because you rang the wrong yeah. <laughs> just like, ah, yeah but he's getting it. it yeah yeah okay <laughs> but so that you, was it yeah the best time of your career would you say is when you went to Portsmouth yeah 100% yeah. Massive yeah. club again. Yeah, yeah. Massive, massive club, I think. So, so I got to the end I of my I didn't realise they were in League Two at that point. Yeah, the League Two, it. yeah. Paul Cook had just totally taken over. The fans had just taken ownership of the club because they'd had all sorts of massive like financial implications right. and stuff. And they ended up having to all cough up. I can't remember what it was, like eight, 900 quid a fan or something to like save the club. And they've all chipped, like loads of them have chipped in and saved the club. So it was fan ownership. That, like The manager's taken over and it was just like, because the because it was owned by the fans, like I say, the whole city just bought into it and it was just, it was mega. Was like, it? Yeah, yeah. So I got to the end of my Fleetwood time. I had two, that, the end of that two year that I had with them, we got promoted at Wembley and stuff. And I'd, I played every game in League, League One. You League One with, with, with Fleetwood? Yeah, at right. Wembley, yeah. I didn't play like, but I got promoted. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, so it was like quite a successful time. Played every game in League One that year and I got to the end and I was like, I went on holiday with the missus and I was like, I, something's missing. Like, I love the club. I love playing for the club and stuff, but I wasn't getting that buzz. I want to play in front of big crowds again. Like, I'd had like 12,000 at Rotherham and 18,000 at Bradford. I want to play in front of big crowds. I think it was like, got to a point in my career where I was like, I'm not going to make enough money to go and play golf every day when yeah. I retire. I need to like get experiences and play in front of big crowds and win trophies and all that. 
So then they offered me a new deal and I turned it down. And I just I just said, I'll just see what happens over the summer. And um, loads of stuff was coming up, but it was like, it just wasn't really getting me going. And then it was like getting towards the end, like getting close to like, well, it was like, it might've been like a week or two into pre-season and all the lads are training and I'm sat at home and I'm like, what am I doing? Like I should have just gone to Fleetwood. <laughs> but then Paul Cook um, rings up my agent. He's like, come down and let's have a look at him, see how fit he is. He's obviously, he's just played like 40 odd times in league one. He's got something about him. I know I've played against him loads of times before. Let's just see if he's fit. So I've just gone down and done, I went on trial effectively. Yeah. But he was like, it's not called a trial because we know all about you. We know you're a good player. It's not like you're an unknown quantity, but we're not going to give you, you a contract. On trial? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. can you go on trial? Yeah. So, Which yeah, voice so did he say that in? Scouse bottom. <laughs> <that. It's laughs> like three different grades to it, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> three or four. Um, Jesus. I'm not doing, yeah, I'm not doing that accent. <laughs> um, yeah, so I go down on trial and it's like I think it was like a couple of games in a score, then I score again the next game. So I'm like, well, you know, they're gonna they're gonna be offering me a deal now. Like they've seen what they need to see, but it went on for ages. So I was down there for like six weeks and they were just like um and R in. Don't know if they were just like trying to find some money from somewhere or whatever. <clears throat> anyway, they turn around and say, like, here's twelve months on similar to what I was on at Fleetwood, a little bit less to be honest, but I was like, Portsmouth, like, I can't turn that down. Like, what a club. Yeah. And I loved it. From the minute I was there, I was just, it was just... They're five years, weren't you, as well? Perfect, yeah. It was just a perfect fit. Like, the fans, everyone will tell you that's ever played there, Geordie. Yes. Um, yeah, you played there, aren't you? Showed him the other night, I said, it's my favourite ever game in football. I was class, played against you, blah, blah, blah. Went, yeah, I was there, but I don't remember it. <laughs> I don't think I watched... I was like, all right, nice and gas. <laughs> showing the highlights, yeah, showing the highlights. Everything but I'm like... watching the game highlights, and I'm like, I, I this is an issue because I don't remember any of this. <laughs> like, have I got like some sort of me like? I don't remember anything. Don't remember the goals, nothing. So I don't know if my memory, my memory is like a sieve thing. Did Did you play in the game? No, I was on the bench. We had to look though, didn't we? I was on the bench the whole game, wasn't I? Yeah, I had to look at the team. <laughs> went, I don't even know. Might have been in the stand. Don't know if I was on the bench. I was like, you're here on the bench. <laughs> you can't yeah. remember anything of the game. No. Did you win? Obviously, rest, Jordan, rest, rest, we got beat. rested we got the big beat. dogs that day, didn't they? Yeah. Resting the big dogs. <laughs> yeah. play against that was class as well. Who are you playing for? You look good on the Alter. highlights, mate. For Alter. Mm. You, is that your best game? It's, well, it's Portsmouth for it. It was a big crowd. Yeah. Was... Were they in League One then? Was you in League One? Yeah. Yeah. It was my got best promoted, game until they scored in the 94th minute. Otherwise, we Hits. would have had... A, Brett, what was it, nil-nil? 1-1. One, 1-1. One. One, one. We would have had a replay. And we probably should have done better. I should have had another penalty. Did you score? Hit the post. Did you score? No. <laughs> I give Hanks the penalty. Why? I just don't like penalties. Bottled it. Yeah, yeah you bottled <laughs> much, it, yeah. yeah. How many fans were on? <clears throat> you know how many were on? Don't they don't even know remember the game. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I'm asking him. There would have there would have been like 13, 14. Yeah, maybe. Fish full. <laughs> Half full. <laughs> 13, 14 people. <laughs> yeah, there was um no, there would have been there would have been over ten thousand. It was a yeah, like it was a first round crowd, of the FA Cup. Yeah. Sound. Yeah. Is that furthest you've been? First round. What did we get to at Salford? No second round. Hmm. Shite. So yeah, so yeah, five year, five good yeah, years. I loved you got it. promotion from League Two to League One. Yeah, so first year we missed out on the playoffs. Second year we ended up getting promoted on the last day. Um, we were well, we, sorry, we won the league on the last day. We got promoted five or six games before that. Right. It's like we got to March time and we lost at home to Crew, and we had we I think we were like fifth or sixth. And the year before we'd lost in the playoffs to Plymouth. So it was like the second time of asking, and the, the fans after that game were acid. Like hammering us, rightly so. We were crap. Yeah, but it looked like the automatics were out of our reach then, and <clears throat> the fans were like absolutely pelting the manager, and it was just one of the worst atmospheres I've had to play. And they just they'd just gone like the place had gone completely turned because they were just they were just getting they were just getting angry at the fact they hadn't got promoted, mm. and they looked like the autos had gone again. And I was thinking the manager, the manager was getting hammered, and it was like from the sideline as well. So I thought <clears throat> next day or straight after the game, he's just going to sack it off and say, 
because I know at the time speaking to like his mates and stuff and the, the other members of the coaching staff, they were thinking he's living for it. He was thinking I'm living four hours away from home here to get absolutely pelted. Like this isn't for me. Like I'm just going to leave. But all the lads got together on the Monday and like we got together and said, well, like, we need to pull our finger out here. Like we need to start a run. And I think between then and the end of the season, we had 13, 14 games. We probably won 11. Right. We just battered everyone. Just absolutely steamrolled everyone. And it got, we kept coming into the last game of the season. We were, I can't remember what it was. I think it was three points behind um, Doncaster and Plymouth. So either of them just needed a draw, I think. And we ste- we were at home to Cheltenham and we just steamrolled them 1 6 1. And I think the stat was we were we were top of the league for 19 minutes. Both of the other the other two teams lost. So all season we've been like <coughs> just in the playoffs. So we might have dipped into the autos and back out. And but yeah, we were top of the league for 20 minutes and we won the league. How <laughs> mad's that? So so they lost on the final day. Both them to you guys yeah. won, and I'm presuming you won it on goal difference. Yeah. No, it might have been a point actually. I think we won it by a point. So it might have been, they might have needed to might win. I can't remember how it was, but basically it came down to the last day. Right. And uh, yeah, it was like... That must have been a brilliant feeling, that. Yeah, unbelievable. Like, because it was fan-owned, the club was owned by the fans as well. Yeah. Everyone bought into it and like, you just, you'd walk down the high street and there'd be like 20 Portsmouth shirts walking past and the whole city is just, because it's actually an island, Portsmouth. Right. So it's all, it's like us versus you mentality where the whole city just, yeah. especially with the football club, because there's no rugby team, there's no cricket team really. And it's there's there's football. nothing really nearby, is there? No. So like, the, that's all the fans have got really, isn't it? The, the football team. Yeah. So everyone just buys into it. The whole city just adores the club. And it's big piss up, basically. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Must have been after that win. Do you remember where you win. went? Yeah, we went out in Gunwharf Keys. So all the wives and girlfriends came along, and they made like quite a big deal of it. We um, had like an area boxed off with three or four tables. One of the best nights of my life. That was class was it? Unbelievable. Yeah, it's like top of the league. Like yeah. even if you think if we win today, there's, like there's a half a chance. But you, you th- you're thinking, nah, it's not happening. That. There's only one thing that can top this night out, and that's Whitby on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That'll be up there. Um, Whitby on Saturday. That's not a big piss up in Whitby. Fucking brilliant. I, there's no way that every yeah. lad's going to make it on the bus on the way home. No, sack it off and it. stay over. Yeah. Some lads are staying over, aren't they? Some are, some are thinking about it. There's like Airbnbs in Whitby for like six quid, so it was definitely out. stay. <laughs> definitely Scarborough. stay. So I know you touched on it before. So you had an amazing five years at Portsmouth. Uh, then obviously it comes to the end and you end up going back to Bradford. I know you touched on it before because you are saying that they're still training in the same place, but like, what made you do that decision? So, yeah, so the sort of the last season, well, I had two years left on my contract and we'd won at Wembley in front of like 86,000 people and... Um, <laughs> Like moments like that where you're looking back and like, I don't want to go anywhere. So I signed a new deal, loved it, signed another two and a half year deal. So it got into like, I saw the six months off for that deal and then went into the next year. And then that next year I was like in and out. I was playing quite a bit, scored five or six goals, I think. But then COVID came in. Um, I think it was that year, COVID came in, um, like February, March time and all play stopped. Covid came in on the right wing. <laughs> yeah, Lee, Lee Covid. <laughs> came in anyway. Who are you? <laughs> I'm Lee. Lee Covid. Best right winger at the club. <laughs> so, yeah. So, all play stopped, and it was wherever you were in the league. So I think we were like fifth or sixth. That's where you finished. Didn't train for like three or four months, and. <clears throat> we ended up losing in the playoffs that summer and then went in for the next season and it just wasn't the same. Um, the manager wasn't playing me as much. I still had another year to go on my deal, but the fan, the, like the main reason why I was down there was for the fans, like I said before. And with COVID, there's no fans there. Yeah, we just Me and Aisla just had a baby. We had no help. So my mum and dad, her mum and dad were like up north. We had no help from anyone. And it was like, what am I doing? Like, Yeah. 
five hours away, four or five hours away from home. Let's get back up north. We need a babysitter. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah. yeah. Need, so that was like I a need massive time thing. away from this kid. <laughs> so odd. Um, and the relationship with Kenny had like Kenny Jacket had just run thin, and loads of stuff went on. We end up sitting here for like three hours talking about him, but um, I've got golf at half twelve. Come on, <laughs> <laughs> it went on. Um, it went on for a while, and I think it got to the the end of the, towards the end of the transfer window, and they signed Michael Jacobs, and I wasn't playing a massive amount anyway at this Michael time. Michael Jacobs. So he was at Wigan, and that's crackers. Crackers, yeah. That's what everyone calls him, yeah. <laughs> did it? Yeah. You crackers, are? yeah. Everyone calls him Crackers. Oh, did they? Yeah, yeah. There you go. Shit. So I knew that. about him. I played about him before, and lads lads in the changing room would play. Like, obviously, I know he's a good player, so I go into the go into the training ground the next day, and the gaffer texts me, and he's like, can you come and see me? I'm like, right. So I make, make my way down and sit, and sit with him, and it was always awkward conversations with Kenny. I'm not going to go too much into it because I'll be here forever, but he's just sitting at the floor, uh, sorry, staring at the floor, talking to me, and he goes, yeah, yeah, Michael Jacobs. And I'm like, yeah, good signing. And he's like, yeah, yeah, so uh, you're not going to play very much. It's like, right, okay. So I'm not going to play at all. Then he's like, yeah, yeah, you're going to play, but Michael Jacobs. <laughs> I'm like, right, okay. But he just kept saying Michael Jacobs. I'm like, just fucking stop saying that name. Like, I know we've signed him. <laughs> and he just goes on and on about Michael. And he's like, so what do you want to do? And I'm like, well, I'll just see how it plays out. And if I don't play very much, then I'll go. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I think that's what's best. But he didn't, he, because he didn't want to say, <laughs> yeah. you want you out. You want it to come from me. But I didn't say it. I was like, if I'm not playing very much, then I'll look at what else there is. I'll move on. He's like, yeah, yeah, I think that's best. So like, right, okay. So then he got drawn out toward, for like two or three weeks towards the end of the transfer window. And a few clubs came in and there were sniffs. There was like, I think Bolton and Salford and Blackpool and <clears throat> quite a few. And then Bradford came back in and I was like, well, let me just... Do you know what? I'll go back there because it's been 15 years. I know the club. Like, I'll go back there and just... In, Is that how long it were, the, the no, difference? No, it might have been 12 years, maybe. Right. <laughs> but it's a long time, so... Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah big change, yeah. <laughs> so, so, what yeah. league are you in? We're still in League 2. <laughs> All right, where but, do you trick? Yeah, still at the school. <laughs> oh, right, okay. Uh. Nothing He's Janice changed. there, the, the dinner lady. Yeah, yeah, Janice is here, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. Leon. Leon's called, yeah. So, well, but Leon. nothing's changed. Well, There's no kitchen at the training ground. They're still training at the same place. So they've just got three microwaves and they just bang your meals in them. Like there's no nutrition or anything on the go. Everything's just so old school. It's a joke. <clears throat> and I'm just like, I can't believe this. I'm like, fucking all these 12 years has gone by and it's literally exactly the same. I knew within a week of signing there that I'd made a mistake, to be honest. Oh, really? I just, I could tell by the quality of the squad that we had the infrastructure of the football club, nothing had changed, nothing's geared towards promotion or success. And I was, I just, I knew within a week ago, and I was like, this is a nightmare. But it was worse because I left Hazel and Atlas down south, um, wife and son. So they were like four hours away. And I was just living in a hotel, but I went up with the view of buying a house. Sounds perfect if I'm honest. But COVID coming. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But he's, what are you complaining about? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Ideal situation, isn't it? He where's, has to say that. Yeah, where's the, where's the bad bit here? <laughs> but I'm, like, I'm missing my son like mad, to be honest. But I'm like, I'm in a hotel room and COVID comes in again. And it's like... I late. Second. <laughs> second <laughs> like, here he is again. Second lockdown and everywhere shut. I'm, yeah. in, I'm in this crap hotel in Bradford. Like, there's not even the kebab shops are shut and that. Like, I can't go and watch a film on my own. Like, nothing. I'm stuck. So I'm just driving up and down to Portsmouth all the time. Like, twice a week. Four hours down, four hours right. up. And I just... It was just not ideal. So, like I say, the second lockdown came in and I'm trying to buy a house. And it was impossible. Like I think it took, took us like four or five months to buy a house and eventually ended up getting Hazel and Atlas to come up and we, we rented somewhere and it was just like, it's just not an ideal situation. It was just loads of things were just compounding and Stuart got the sack then. Then they gave it to the under 18 managers for the, end of, for, the, for the rest of the season. Then it got to the summer and they got rid of him and then Derek Adams came in and I was like, that's just my luck. Like, because like, we had previous anyway. For a little where? bit. Well, he was the Plymouth manager when right. I was at Portsmouth and I'd be like captain and we'd go in the referees' rooms and there'd be like words exchanged and like 
Just I was playing right back at the time. Yeah. And I'd be like, another position. Go and take a throw in at the ed- at the edge of the pitch or whatever. And he'd like get the ball and hide it behind him. And I'm like picking him up and throwing him out of the way. And loads of stuff went on. And, and then he comes in like, as your gaffer. Yeah. Brilliant. So there was a game where I think it was two all and we got interviewed after the game by the press. And Derek's gone down and done all the press and we battered him, but it was two all. And then they come down afterwards and the press have gone the usual. Like, how do you think the game went, guys? Blah, blah, blah. I went, yeah, I thought we thought we were really comfortable in possession, creating loads of chances, usual stuff. And he's like, well, Derek's just said that they popped you off the park. So, like, what's your take on that? And I'm, I just like, I'm like, what? Like, this guy's like not right. He's not wired up right. So I just go, well, I couldn't really care less what he's got to say. He's an idiot. No. <laughs> No, in, no interest in what he's got to say. He's an idiot. So next day, Portsmouth Hughes headline. Evans says Adams Adams is an idiot. Doesn't know what he's talking about. So like, this thing Cheers. goes like like all over Twitter and that. Yeah. And then there's like, every time we play him after that, there's just, so there's just like bad feeling between yeah. us. And then that summer we got lined up with all these different managers and then Derek Adams' favourites with the bookies. And I'm, sat, I'm thinking, please, no, don't be him. Fucking him in it. So Get signed, and I'm like, that's just my luck with managers. That yeah. couldn't believe it. So yeah, he was a strange cat to say the least. Like really strange. So I don't then, want to batter him too much because it doesn't really look good. But I haven't really got a good word to say about him. But he came in on the first day of pre-season, and I'm thinking this isn't going to go well. He's like, I'm gone. Like I'm going to have to move and find another club. I can't work with him. So he comes in and we're all, we all go in the meeting room and there's like 10 minutes go by and he walks in and normally as a manager, when a manager comes in, he'll say, say what his philosophy is, say what the plan is for pre-season, if we're going away, where we're going for pre-season, Spain, Portugal, whatever, all the usual stuff. And he comes in and all the lads are sat down and I'm last in the room because I've been in the gym. So I'm sat right at the front and he comes in and he stands there and he's like, all the, all the lads are looking at him and he goes, I haven't got a problem with you. Right. He's like, it's water under the bridge. There's been loads made of it. I haven't got a problem with you. Scottish is back here. Yeah. Scottish, <laughs> like, there's a theme here, isn't there? Yeah. It's like another Scottish one. And I'm like, of all the things that you can be talking about here, like, what are you talking about me for? It's weird. Like, if you're going to do it, do it in the office. Yeah. And then he doesn't say anything else. He's like, right, get your runners on. We're going out, going out on the track. So then everyone's the thing like, is though, he's that highlighted that. He's obviously has got a, a problem with it still, hasn't he? Yeah, but that's what, yeah. So that's what I took yeah. from it. So I'm like, the fact that he's mentioned it, yeah, shows that there's a problem, and then moving forwards, it was oh, it was all, but all, the, all the lads are walking out of that room thinking, What's gone on between you two? Like, it wasn't yeah. even anything, but yeah, just don't mention it, yeah, <laughs> just don't mention it. Evo, any regrets or anything in your career apart from coming on here, <laughs> yeah, apart from coming on and here, Radcliffe, yeah. <laughs> Radcliffe, yeah, nah, no regrets at all, really. I look back in, at some of the moments and think. I wish I wish it panned out in a different way, like the Michael Flynn tackle at Bradford, and that my whole career would have changed if that never happened. And like um, second, like we played Sunderland in the playoffs at Portsmouth in the second leg, and I missed a header from like three yards out, and I'm like, if that got in, yeah, you can't dwell on them. No, but that's what I mean. That the only little things like that, really. But I think some players like you like latch onto managers, don't they, and like make a career of it. <laughs> Where I mean, it was like, yeah. yeah. John, John T. and Burn. 100%. <laughs> My guys. And they, <laughs> My go, guys they go everywhere with him. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm quite pleased with the fact that I can look back and go, everything that I've achieved, I've sort of done it myself. I've done it my own way. And it might kill me a little bit at times, but yeah, look back and like, I played played 600 games in the Football League. And yeah, it's brilliant. Three promotions and played at Wembley in front of 86,000 people and stuff that like, look back and go, don't really like doesn't really resonate maybe in 10 15 years time i look back and go that was amazing but mate it's, it is amazing and it's it baffles me like now you've done all that and now you can't even play for radcliffe <laughs> you can't even get on the pitch i was trying to win burn <laughs> <laughs> no comment <laughs> mate it's been an absolute pleasure to Cheers, have you lads. on Class, thanks very much thanks, thanks guys, evans <laughs>